Hello everyone. Welcome to this last session of GS answer writing free module. Uh, this session will deal with second part of GS4 answer writing that is section B case studies answer writing. So you know me, uh, you know that I am an author of Depot Ethics book, uh, which I am sure will be very helpful uh, to handle not only previous year question papers, but also case studies and relevant theories. Uh, if you have the book with you, uh, I advise you to keep it handy because I'll be discussing case studies from the book itself. Also, I am author of upcoming book. Uh, hopefully, by the time you are watching this session, it would be out in markets. I'm not sure because it is in permission stages. So you can anyway Google and check if it is out or not. You can download my notes and answer copies from my uh, WordPress blog that is mudhijanblog.wordpress.com or you can uh, ask any queries related to CSC preparation uh, directly to me on my Telegram channel that is Decode Civil Group, or you can visit my YouTube channel that is Mudhijan UPSC for other exam related strategies. Uh, I'm sure you must be aware of this slide. I have shown you across video sessions. So let us skip these slides in this final session and come straight to the agenda of the session. So uh, you must be aware that uh, section B has six questions every year. Uh, questions are either 20 marker or 25 marker. So at times it happens that section B is of 120 marks uh, that particular year uh, there are six question every question is of 20 marks but in some years it has happened that it is of 130 marks so uh, four questions are of 20 marks plus two questions are of 25 marks each so both type of questions can be asked uh, either way you have to answer them in 250 words or 300 words and at max you get three pages to answer them uh, for a 20 marker question, uh, you get 14 minutes to answer because for a 10 marker question, you have seven minutes. So for a 20 marker question, you have 14 minutes. Now, the most important factor to handle case studies properly is the timing aspect. So uh, there are six case studies. Each case study requires 14 minutes. That is, uh, that gives you 84 to say 90 minutes. So section A must be covered within 90 minutes. If you are taking too much time in section A, trust me, you won't be able to handle section B. So if one question of 10 marker uh, needs seven minutes, then uh, 90 question, 90 minutes means 13 questions. Uh, I think 12 questions are asked. So still you have time. Uh, but then do finish section A at max by 90, 95 minutes. Do not take more time than that. If you do so, you won't be able to handle case studies properly. Now you will say that if case studies are so important, then let us start with the section B and then we'll handle section A. But my idea is that examiner will be checking section A first. Uh, there are various theories regarding it that section A is checked by someone else, section B is checked by somebody else, but nobody is sure. So take it as that examiner has just got your answer copy and he has started checking from the first page itself. Now, if you have handled section B first, you have taken say 100 minutes, then you will rush through section A, but the examiner is checking from section A. So. Uh, he'll see in section A that you have rushed through various questions. You have not answered them well. Your impression will be doomed. By the time he or she comes to section B, it won't even matter whether you have written answers thoroughly or not because your impression that is the first impression is negative. So start with section A, finish it on time and then approach section B. Uh, coming to the second point, uh, the questions are analytical as you must be aware, but at times it has happened that current affairs based questions uh, which deal with particular laws like 
preventing sexual harassment at workplace or rti etc have been asked uh, also there are theoretical questions like perhaps in csm 14 a uh, question was asked on environmentalism uh, case study uh, uh, it dealt with dilemma between economy economic development and environment and you had to tell some feasible steps so that is a theoretical sort of case study because it is gs it is not ethics but then as i told you in the previous session that is section a answer rating every abstract to abstract question has to be answered in a form that it appears that answer is from ethics and not gs so i'll be telling you how to handle these case studies this is a broad view uh, i'll discuss the format usage of theory diagram how to handle case studies on spot this i've already told you that you will get this much of time to handle case study uh, this is actually 25 uh, so you will get only one opportunity to read uh, read the case study because time is limited so read it very carefully i'll cover these points in the coming slide so i don't think we should uh, discuss them now itself uh, let me tell you the answer structure now so there is no fixed format to answer a case study uh, everybody knows uh, there are n number of formats but then uh, i'll discuss the cliche sort of format that i used to followed and that worked a lot for me so as you read the case identify following uh, identify the facts identify various stakeholders associated with the case like uh, if case starts with you are a ceo of this this area then you are a stakeholder mm, the uh, area has seen farmer protest of late then farmer become second stakeholder and so on uh, recognize the moral issues and dilemmas or ethical dilemmas in the case for example in the question i just gave uh, there were farmer protest so farmer protest in itself is an ethical dilemma in the case so you have to identify them because we will be mentioning these things at the start of our answer in case study it is mandatory it, even in the most abstract of cases you will mention the stakeholders and the ethical dilemmas related to case in the beginning itself so coming to the next slide uh, as you read the question mark in question paper this is very important uh, even though the question paper of upsc clearly says do not write anything but then you won't be able to handle the question itself if you do not mark or underline in the question paper i never faced any difficulty i have written four mains couple of them were in upsc center itself nobody stopped me no invigilator stopped me from marking the or underlining keywords in question paper so you i think you can do that uh, uh, mark in question paper various actors what you can do is that you can circle the actors like i have and underline the dilemmas so i have already told you that you will get only one opportunity to read the entire case you have to be very careful you have to identify these two things particularly actors and dilemmas so what if you underline uh, actors as well as dilemmas so by the end you read such a big case study you might forget who was actor who is dilemma so just to differentiate uh, circle the actors and underline the dilemmas or you can uh, underline the actors and circle the dilemmas it is on you this will help in saving time as you won't have to search the same again while writing the answer so this is a sample uh, it is a 2014 case uh, let me read it to you and as i read i'll mark the actors and dilemmas so that you can understand how i approach case studies nowadays there is an increasing thrust on economic development around the globe so i am marking increasing thrust on economic development because as soon as you read the first line it will definitely click to you that this question will be dealing with development versus environment sort of thing so economic development in itself is a dilemma in this question at the same time there is also an increasing concern about 
environmental degradation degradation so this is the second dilemma many a times we so we are the stakeholders the mankind is the stakeholder so mankind uh, we or mankind becomes the actor in this case or stakeholder in this case many a times we face direct conflict between developmental activity and environmental quality it is neither feasible to stop or curtail the development process nor it is advisable to keep degrading the environment as it threatens our very own survival now this is again a dilemma also uh, this is a dilemma developmental activity versus environmental quality discuss the same sorry i should have underlined see this is the problem i have circled it i have circled this as well so in a bigger question it might become difficult to recognize which was dilemma which was actor but then here it is quite evident that this is a dilemma this is also a dilemma discuss some feasible strategies that could be adopted to eliminate this conflict and which could lead to sustainable development so i won't discuss the case the question was put only to tell you how to identify actors and dilemmas now uh, what other actors you can identify in this question uh, that you are not only the stakeholder even animals or plants or the nature itself is an actor nature or you can say earth uh rather than we write mankind so these become your actors so another learning from this slide is that some of the actors and dilemmas will be explicitly mentioned in the case and some of the actors and dilemmas will be implicit you have to read between the lines in the case and find those actors and dilemmas and you can mention them in the case itself so uh, mention the uh, start the answer by mentioning the facts of case this is one approach which people follow another approach is that they mention the stakeholders and dilemmas of the case i used to follow this approach i uh, did not mention uh, facts in my answer facts of case but then you can follow this approach as well so if there are six uh, six case studies uh, you can men start with mentioning facts of case background of case in three of them and uh, then mention stakeholders and dilemmas and in other three start by mentioning stakeholders and dilemmas so even in your six case studies you are giving examiner two different approaches even in the most abstract of cases like the previous one it is quite an abstract case it is a gs question there is only one thing that is development versus environment and you have to write entire 250 words on that uh, and remember you have to write from point of view of ethics not gs3 so it is a abstract case even in that you have to mention these above points that is facts stakeholders and dilemmas if you think that a question is from current affairs like we did in gs Uh, other gs subjects mention the news background if you think that a particular case is directly from some act like rti uh, mention uh, something about the act in the introduction itself this will form fact of the case so uh, for example if some year a question is asked that even despite strict implementation of rti Uh, the self disclosure culture of information is yet not established uh, what are the feasible steps that you think uh, can bring about positive change in various organizations so in this question it is clearly mentioned that it is based on rti so mentioning the fact of case start with that rti act was formed in this this year it deals with this this thing uh, mention arc as keyword so Uh, just in two three lines start with mentioning about the act uh, then when you come to your case the um, most important thing regarding every case is finding the alternatives what are your options what are the alternatives of steps or solutions uh, in the particular case so uh, what options are available think from the moral point of view think from the legal point of view think about the rights of stakeholders mentioned in the case 
think about the dilemmas that you have mentioned in the case whatever option appears to be moral as well as legal and solves uh, most of the dilemmas related to most of stakeholders uh, promotes common good and such option is the holistic option i repeat if there are say 1 2 3 4 5 options uh, the first option you think it is ethical but not legal so do not follow that second option might be legal but not ethical so do not follow that Uh, this option must be ethical as well as legal but then it is not addressing the dilemmas given in that case so it is useless uh, again it is legal as well as ethical but then uh, say if there are 10 stakeholders this particular solution satisfies only 3 of them so if stakeholders themselves are not satisfied then answer is poor so leave leave that lastly the solution that is left is ethical as well as legal plus which handles the dilemmas and which handles the stakeholders so you have to go with this particular alternative or option uh, use of ethical principles this is very important i'll be discussing three case studies with you guys so uh, i have used uh, various ethical principles in my answers uh, so to discuss uh as i told you in section a your answer must be 80% application based and 20% and not more than that theoretical or uh, using of theories thinkers uh, keywords etc so this applies in case studies as well mm, say if you are writing six points uh, mention some thinker or theory something of uh, ethics point of view in at least two points so this is to ensure that you stick to what is required in ethics paper uh, so that your points are not generic even in most abstract of cases when you write something related to ethics every now and then say after every three points uh, you are writing something from ethics syllabus then examiner will be forced to think that your answer is not generic your answer is ethical so you are providing application based answer and at the same time your answer appears to be from ethics so this is very important but this is a skill that will develop gradually because in case studies we tend to forget writing about theories and principles we are not able to link our points with theories and principles so the key to it is that as i told you in previous session make a list of 100 odd keywords keep revising revising them again and again uh, revise them just before the exam while you are entering the exam exam hall 10 minutes before that revise those keywords this will ensure that you will have keywords fresh in your mind and then only you will be able to use them in your answers but at the same time do not use too many philosophical jargons it is better to stick to the terms and associated vocabulary mentioned in the syllabus as i have already told you only passing reference is required now if i am mentioning uh, say deontology of kant i need not explain beyond that if i have written some point um, and in front of that i have mentioned this is in line with deontological principle as postulated by kant that's it you are not required to explain the ontology you are not required to tell who was kant etc so this is it about usage of ethical principles acts and laws i have already told you uh, in bits and pieces in sec uh, in this session that if a question is from act or law you have to mention that for example couple of times at least i think it has happened that case study has been based on sexual harassment so if you know Uh, the act that is sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition and redressal act 2013 firstly you have to mention the name of the act and then mention some facts regarding this act so that you can use them in your answer you can use them as stakeholder and dilemmas and this will generate a very good impact in your answer and definitely you will get edge over your competitors diagram so 
I don't think I need to repeat, but then uh, for sake of it, I'll say that you can draw at least one diagram as I have told you in all GS questions, but then those were 10 markers or 12 markers. If a question is of 20 marks, draw one diagram. If question is of 25 marks, draw two diagrams. So your task becomes tough when the marking scheme increases. So if UPSC has asked a 25 mark case study, draw two diagrams, one won't be enough because it might happen that it gives 3.5 pages or four pages to answer such question. You won't have enough points. So the best way to fill pages, fill space in that case is drawing diagram. So you can draw two diagrams. This all you know, uh, decision charts or flow charts. So flow chart is like, uh, first I'll do this step, then I'll do this step, then I'll do this, then I'll do this. So this is a chronological flow chart. Another sort of is decision chart that decision, is it yes or is it no? If I take this decision, then this might happen, then this might happen. If I don't take this decision, then this might happen and this might happen. So this is the most impactful sort of diagram in case studies because in every case study you have to take one or other decision. So all that you have written in your answer, you just have to make a pictorial presentation of same. And this can also be drawn. Otherwise, Huben spoke model is always there for your help. If you are asked for uh, innovative steps like in the previous question of CSE 2014, so in that write steps in center and then mention four steps as uh, words only. So you can innovate as much as possible. Sky is the limit. Last but not the least, this is the most important aspect of case study. Uh, I told you in every answer, uh, every session uh, of previous GS sessions that you have to summarize in one or two lines. But when it comes to section B of ethics paper, you have to write para, not points as conclusion, at least four or five or six lines. Uh, because this is the op last opportunity with you to show to the examiner that you have handled the case well, even if you didn't. So what I mean to say that say there were 10 actors or 10 stakeholders in the case. There were five dilemmas in the case, but in your answer, you forgot about say two or three actors, you forgot about two dilemmas. So your answer is not complete. You shouldn't get uh, 10 out of 20, but then, uh, in the end, if you just write these lines that hence the given solution addresses various sectors and dilemmas given in the case, and it is therefore a, a holistic solution. What you are doing is you are basically forcing the examiner in the very end to think that you have handled the case well. I know it is a bluff, but then it is very important the examiner might call your bluff or he or she may not. So why lose the opportunity? Use this bluff. I have always done this uh, as there are six case studies, uh, just switch the words of conclusion here and there, but broadly the conclusion used to remain the same. Uh, what you can do is that in the bracket, mention the actors again, one or two actors, mention the dilemmas again, it, uh, example one, two, three again. So this will bring uh, novelty in your conclusion according to the case as well. But then mentioning these lines are very important. Uh, as I've written here, you literally have to impose on the examiner that you have addressed the case well, even, not even, even if you haven't. So conclusion is the most important part of your case study answer. Now let me discuss what types of cases are asked by UPSC. So this is the easiest one of them uh, that options are given already by in the question paper, one, two, three, four options are given. All you have to do is write merit and demerits of those options. So 
the point that matters here is that say this is a 20 marker question you have three pages to fill and upsc has given you only four options it has told you to write merit and demerit but it hasn't told you to write how many merits and demerits so as we used to divide our question in other sessions you have to divide accordingly so if it is a 20 marker question and upsc has given you say four options then every option carries five marks so uh, if you have to write merits and demerits ensure that you write five points for merit plus demerit so what i am saying is that for the first option uh, if you have written two merits then write three demerits for the second option if you have written three merits write two demerits so in all what you are doing is you are giving five points here five here five for the third option and five for the fourth option in all you will have 20 points but i am sure this won't be possible this is the ideal scenario so at max what you will be doing you will write two merits two demerits two merits two demerits so even in that case you will have 16 points so it will be good but then ideally i would want you to write more so uh, similarly in a case where uh, upsc gives you five options so every question every option becomes of four marks so in that case mention two merits and two demerits only and not more than that this will also help you in finishing the given case in time so imagine a situation where there were four options you have to write merits and demerits and in the first option itself you are writing huge list of merits and huge list of demerits so this won't give you enough time to handle other three options this will take more time this particular case and then complete section b will be ruined so remember these basics second type of question is when options are given uh, when you have to give options options are not given and you have to give merits and demerits so in this question give four options uh, not more because the more number of options you give more merits and demerits you have to write so be smart give only four options and write two merits or two demerits each or one merit two demerits likewise uh, other type of question is give options and choose the best option so again give four options and uh, the best option is a mixture of all of those four options so ensure that in these options four options that you are giving you are not giving the final option itself final option should always be a mixture of the four options that you have given it should be a holistic uh, option and combination of all the four options uh, other type is in which you have to give options you have to write merit and demerit and you have to choose this is the lengthiest of all types of case studies i repeat give options discuss merit and demerit and choose and justify why you have chosen a particular option so it is very common sort of question but it is very lengthy in this question do not give more than three options if you give five options you will be writing merits and demerits for a huge amount of time you won't be able to complete the case study within the 14 minutes timeline and other cases will be impacted so write three options only uh, other is illustration based case studies which were asked in CSE 2019 if you have seen 2019 paper cases type of cases were very different from what used to be so I have included 12 illustrations in my uh, second edition of decode ethics apart from uh, the illustrations that were asked in means 2019 so if you have book uh, do go through those illustrations and last but not the least uh, there are cases in which you are required to write these steps what steps will you take in this situation now 
do not confuse them with options there are two things one thing is that you are asked to give option and then you are asked to choose give steps is altogether different thing in this you have to give steps like one step two after this i'll do step three then step four then step five do not end up giving options in this sort of case these are asking chronological steps so these are very easy to handle but then the key is that do not misread the question be very careful now let us discuss three case studies uh, the this particular case study is from uh, upsc mains 2018 so as i read this case study i'll uh, mark the dilemmas i'll try to circle the uh, actors actors and dilemmas so let us see a big corporate house this is our actor 1 is engaged in manufacturing industrial chemicals for now make industrial chemicals an actor because you are just starting the case you do not know uh, if chemicals themselves are of huge important in this case or not so let us keep it in the tentative list of actors uh, it is engaged in manufacturing industrial dilemmas on a large scale it proposes to set up an additional unit many states rejected its proposal due to the detrimental effect on environment this is our first dilemma but one state government accepted to the request and permitted the unit close to a city brushing aside all opposition the unit was set up 10 years ago and was in full swing till recently the pollution caused by the industrial effluents was affecting the land water and crops in the area it was also causing serious health problems to human beings and animals human and animal are actors this gave rise to a series of agitations demanding the closure of plant in recent agitation thousand of people took part creating law and order problem necessitating stern police action police is actor uh, following the public outcry the state government ordered the closure of factory it is a dilemma closure of factory resulted in unemployment of not only those workers who were engaged in the factory but also those who were working in the ancillary units it is also very it had it also very badly affected those industry which depended on chemical manufactured manufactured by it so unemployment directly workers unemployment in ancillary units and uh, unemployment or affected industries uh, that depended on chemical as a senior officer interested with the responsibility you yourself uh, are an actor uh, of handling this issues how are you going to address it so uh, i have marked the actors i marked the dilemmas uh, live in front of you uh, now this particular case is the uh, case type this give steps it has asked simply asked you how are you going to address it it has not asked you options if it had asked you options it would have clearly said uh, how are you what are the feasible options uh, in front of you mm, then it might have asked you to write merits and demerits or it might have asked you to choose the best option of the possible ones so but this in this case you are asked to write steps so let us now begin with the case i hope all you all of you have focused well while reading the case because in upsc such big case is asked and you hardly get uh, one opportunity to read the case so uh, be very careful and attentive attentive while reading the case now as i told you uh, that you will be mentioning stakeholders involved in the case 
you can mention facts of the case or you can mention dilemmas of the case so now this is my style as my book has contribution by 25 officers from various services this question was solved by some other officer so it is solved in his or her style i haven't solved this question so if i had solved i would have started with mentioning the stakeholders so i would have written uh, stakeholders involved 1 2 3 4 5 6 or uh, like uh, i've mentioned me in bracket i'll say uh, senior officer comma other stakeholder comma other stakeholder so you can either you use this point form or you can use this now see we dis we saw this case here in this case it is Uh, you can very well guess while reading the case itself that you might end up with less points and you have three pages to fill so in this particular case uh, when you are mentioning actors utilize more space so write 1 2 3 4 likewise but in this case where the case is in itself very big and you are asked for steps i am sure you will be able to fill three pages yourself so there is no need for you to occupy space so in this use comma approach and not waste space in point format now these are very innovative points which i am telling you from my own experience so i would have written stakeholders involved then issues involved are written by this particular officer as well so issue one big corporate house uh environmental degradation health issues public agitation i would have mentioned unemployment as well uh then uh, you can mention public outcry agitation has already been written uh demand for closure of plant i would have written that uh, unemployment uh, that it would lead to unemployment so i think overall the issues have been mentioned then uh, start with the body of your main answer where you are required to tell how are you going to address it so make separate heading for that now the agenda of session is not to read the answer as such uh, i am only here to tell you the format and uh, to train your mind so i think uh, if you want to go through the answer itself then you can pause the video and go through it uh, let me see if the particular answer has case uh, has use some principles or not so here as i can see term eia so as this question is related to industries and effluents and uh, environmental degradation degradation and all so eia comes into play so it is very well written that as a senior a senior officer there is need to check if eia was conducted for the project and all clearances were obtained or not uh similarly let me find other keywords or principles uh here uh, the officer has given steps technology upgrade uh, process upgradation minimize environmental fruit, uh, footprint by environmental sustainability so here another keyword is given environmental sustainability uh, paris agreement is mentioned as a keyword training of manpower strict monitoring of Uh, on part of state like air and water quality uh, this is the diagram and that is the steps diagram chronological steps that i told you so here it is written regulate and monitor rather than closing down a industry uh, that is 10 years old this is to serve utilitarianism so here comes the keyword that if you monitor rather than close then industry will also function and environment will also be saved so this will lead to largest good and that is called utilitarianism also environmental ethics is a keyword that is used sustainable development it will lead and it is again a keyword uh, implementing eia and then the uh, other steps so ample amount of keywords are used 
दिस इज हाउ यू हैव टू लिंक योर जेनेरिक पॉइंट्स विद कीवर्ड सो दैट पॉइंट्स अपियर टू बी दैट फ्रॉम सिलेबस ऑफ एथिक्स इट सेल्फ अदरवाइज द होल आंसर विल अपियर वेरी जेनेरिक एंड जी एस ओरिएंटेड एंड नॉट नॉट एथिक्स ओरिएंटेड एज सच लास्टली द ऑफिसर हैज रिटर्न द कंक्लूजन सो लेट्स रीड द कंक्लूजन बिकॉज कंक्लूजन इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ केस स्टडी हिंस क्लोजर ऑफ इंडस्ट्री इज नॉट द सोल्यूशन टू द प्रॉब्लम एज इट विल लीड टू जॉब लॉसेज इफेक्ट द जी डी पी ऑफ स्टेट एंड कंट्री एंड इफेक्ट द डाउन स्ट्रीम इंडस्ट्रीज सो सी हाउ वेरियस डिलेमाज दैट वी मार्ड इन द केस आर यूज इन द कंक्लूजन दैट इंडस्ट्रीज विल बी इफेक्टेड जॉब्स विल बी इफेक्टेड Uh, the issue can be better handled by incorporating environmental sustainable practices in the manufacturing practices of the unit which doesn't harm the environment uh, at the same time regular social audit again a keyword is used of the industry can be conducted to ensure that safe practices are being followed uh, one more line could have been written that hence the steps listed above steps listed above are For, uh, present a holistic solution to the given case so that is about the first case now let us come to the second case study again as we will read this case we will underline uh, we'll underline the dilemmas and we will uh, circle the actors so let me read the case uh, suppose that you are an officer officer in charge of implementing a social service scheme to provide support to old and destitute women an old and illiterate women comes to avail the benefits of scheme however she has no documents this is a dilemma to show that she fulfills the eligibility criteria but after meeting her and listening to her you feel that she certainly needs the support this is a dilemma that she does not have documents but you feel that she needs support uh, your inquirers also show that inquirers are actor they also show that she is really destitute and living in a pitiable condition you are in a dilemma as to what to do putting her under the scheme without necessary documents would clearly be violation of rules this is dilemma but denying her support would be cruel and inhuman so it is a dilemma can you think of a rational way to resolve this dilemma give reasons for it so again the question is asking you to list steps and not options so be very careful while judging what the case wants from you so we have marked the dilemmas and actors now let us see the solution so again facts of case and dilemmas are mentioned again this case was solved by one or other officer uh, i would have mentioned stakeholders as well so while uh, uh, starting the answer i'll write stakeholders are 1 2 3 one go sequence wise so that you do not miss any stakeholder so first circle is uh, me Uh, in bracket right officer in charge second uh, stakeholder is old and destitute old slash destitute slash illiterate women so that is the second uh, actor and third is inquirers there are no other actors in this case dilemmas have already been mentioned like compassion in public service citizen centricity out of box thinking etc need of super erogation versus duty based governance this dilemma itself uses keywords of ethics so again some uh, intro regarding the case is written and then separate heading is made that my approach would be now another thing to note is that uh, upsc has asked can you think of rational way give your reasons so i don't know why the coaching centers out there advise aspirants to not write in first person but then when upsc itself is asking what you think you have to write i think so write in first person nobody is going to deduct marks for that i in fact i think it is required to write in first person 
so uh, again rightly the officer has solved using first person approach so you can read the points yourself uh, i'll focus on the keywords if mentioned uh, see uh, how innovatively schemes like aadhar voter id are used uh, a keyword super erogatory action is written super erogatory is something uh, when you go beyond the call of duty you are required to do x thing according to duty but then you not only do x but y and z also so you are going beyond your mandate for in good faith so that is super erogatory action uh, emotional so uh, word emotions is used that means that officer is trying to link it with syllabus uh, chapter that is emotional intelligence so as i told you already you have to link your points with syllabus itself so to uh, two aspects we have noted that aadhar voter id current affairs schemes are used and then keywords like super erogatory ei etc are used uh, then see dpsp how innovatively dpsp in article 47 has been used here while we compartmentalize ourselves and believe that ARC can be written only in GS2. Economic survey can be written only in GS3, but it is not the case. Whenever you find an opportunity, like uh, opportunity was here uh, to write DPSP, uh, again you can write ARC as well. That ARC focuses on citizen-centric governance, which I think is written in the second point. So in front of that, you can write ARC. Do not lose opportunity to quote reports. this will really add to your answer another keyword from syllabus compassion with weaker sections if you have gone through the syllabus you will be aware that this is directly this point is directly picked from the syllabus itself good governance is also a keyword from syllabus uh, indian society uh, society is a keyword in syllabus so again duty super erogation so just pause the video later and see how uses uh, how the answer uses various keywords various theories etc this is a simple step chronological diagram uh, that i'll take super erogatory action go beyond mandated duty ensure ethical handling of case this ensures democratic attitude and good governance now uh, if you have watched section a video i have clearly told that use keywords from previous year question papers so if you remember in particular year there was a question uh, bureaucratic attitude attitude versus democratic attitude so this keyword is coming directly from there democratic attitude good governance is again a keyword uh, also lastly this is the conclusion lack of government documents is prime reason for exclusions under scheme my action ensures delivery of services even to the last man standing in the last row in lines with gandhian maxim and addresses the stakeholders and dilemmas mentioned in the case this is a very good conclusion because it has used the line that i mentioned uh, that you are basically forcing the examiner here to uh, think that you have addressed all the dilemmas and actors of case and then it is using uh, a thinker in gandhi ji and it is using his theory of last man standing in the last row so this is a very good conclusion i think you can learn this conclusion and try to use it in various cases uh, now let us come to the last case of this video again i'll underline the dilemmas and i'll circle the actors so one of the scientist working in R&D lab of a major pharmaceutical company discovers that one of the company's best selling wet drug has potential to cure uh, a currently incurable liver disease this is a dilemma potential to cure a currently incurable liver disease which is prevalent in tribal areas however developing a variant of drug suitable for human being entailed a lot of research and development having a huge expenditure of extent of rupees 50 crores 
so this is a dilemma that lot of research is required uh, and expense is required it was unlikely that company would recover the cost this is a huge dilemma as the disease was rampant only in poverty stricken areas again a huge dilemma having very little market otherwise if you are the ceo then identify various actions that you could take evaluate the pros and cons of each of your actions now this is a case in which you have to list out options and you have to give merit and demerits it is a 20 marks case so as i told you in the slide itself this is case type 2 where you have to give options and you have to write merits and demerits so give four options and write two merits and two demerits for each do not give more than four options because the case will become very lengthy otherwise so uh, i have started with mentioning the stakeholders then i have mentioned the dilemmas and i mentioned various ethical principles that can be linked with this particular case this is a novel approach uh, you can use this as well that in the intro of the case itself you link uh, the case with various theories and principles so that you are bringing ethics into play in the intro of case itself let us see the dilemmas dilemmas include economic versus social values humanity versus organizations profitability now you could have written in dilemmas that cost is huge huge r and d required uh, business might take a hit that is one way to write dilemmas uh, here i have used uh, the known dilemmas uh, known ethical dilemmas or just dilemmas from the book itself so if you have read my book uh, you will find mention of dilemmas like Uh, individual versus organization uh, vested uh, organizational interest versus uh, societal interest uh, economic interest versus social interest so i am picking the uh, dilemmas in that sense here uh, so three things have been written then uh, write separate heading various possible actions and their pros and cons now when you are asked to write options as well as their merit and demerit uh, write them together even though it is written as separate parts a and b so what you can do is in uh, in the answer better approach would have been write a and list 1 2 3 4 options and then write part b in which you are writing uh, merit and demerit of options because everything must be crystal clear to the examiner that you have handled both part a and b here in this answer it is not very clear whether you have answered both parts or not of course you have but then do not take a chance uh, examiner might be looking for something like this a and b and when he does not see that uh, it may go against you so anyway this way the question is handled here uh, various possible actions and their pros and cons uh, four options have been given and then in every option merit and demerit is written the key is to write uh, principles keywords and theories so here is a keyword social values uplifting poor masses is another keyword economic or business ethics is a keyword sustainability in long run is a keyword uh, so uh, in the second part of answer that is point 3 and point 4 keywords are not used but then anyway at least four keywords have been already used and that is what you require for uh, mentioning four to five keywords in your answer uh, again there is a diagram a simple step wise diagram and then again keywords are used societal good communitarianism etc and in the question it was not mentioned uh, to select one step but then in the conclusion i have selected one step 
keeping in mind the principle of societal good and communitarianism company can adopt fourth option and not only serve society but also make goodwill for itself hence this addresses various dilemmas and stakeholders so here you are imposing on the examiner that your option your answer is holistic here you are writing keywords and here i have mentioned the possible step also so this is uh, the way you can handle case studies of course uh, there is no particular set format to handle cases but then this approach is a tried and tested approach it has worked for me not once but at least thrice uh, where i scored more than 110 plus three times in ethics so this is a sample case uh, in case you do not have my book so i have added this sample case i have not discussed the solution here you can pause the video later uh, you can revisit the entire video and try to implement the strategy that i have told in this particular case so in case you have any other issues uh, you can download my solved answer copies from my blog that is mudijan blog Uh, you can ask your queries related to this session on my telegram channel that is decode civils group or you can visit other detailed videos on ethics uh, on my channel uh, just visit my channel uh, click on playlist tab and then select ethics so there you will find uh, at least 5 or 6 detailed videos in ethics preparation uh, lastly uh, you can buy this book in case you are looking for some option and i hope by the time this session is published uh, my history book would have already reached the markets so this is all from my side in this session uh, happy learning stay safe take care of yourselves thank you